Hey guys, how's it going? Kaza here. Thought I would make a quick video on this. So I had a problem last night when I was running my stream. I'm trying to set the uh, the phone down here carefully. I had a problem when I was running my stream yesterday. Um, monitor, it's right here. It's the uh, little LED lights that light up um, and let me know what the temperature is on my CPU. I noticed it running considerably hotter all of a sudden during last night's stream before my uh, my computer eventually blue screened, shut down, and uh, that was the end of the stream. Well, the computer didn't have any damage to it. I turned it back on, had everything working just fine, but it was still running considerably hotter. Now, typically, that monitor down there, the little the little LED monitor down there I pointed out before, will typically tell me it's at about 58 to 60 degrees Celsius uh, when I'm in the middle of a stream, but I noticed it hitting 65 degrees and then when I turned the computer back on after it failed, um, I noticed that it was running at about 60 degrees Celsius while just playing a game, not even running my streaming software. So I think it's time to reseat and uh, reapply thermal paste to the heatsink that's in here. So we're going to go ahead and do a little quick little video tutorial on how to do that uh, for people who may run into this issue. Now I'm going to quickly go ahead and grab the thermal paste that I got. Um, I went into Best Buy. You can pick this up for, for dirt cheap. Um, I got the thermal paste or thermal take TG7. That's just what was there. Um, Arctic Silver is usually what I would recommend, but I can't seem to find that syringe anywhere. So I walked into Best Buy. I found this for a grand total of $7. Now they sell Insignia, which is their shit brand um they sold it for like eleven dollars uh don't buy it it's not not worth it whatsoever and this one came with a handy little applicator which is really cool um not that i really ever need that or, or would want to use it right but we're going to go ahead and i'm going to quickly show you how i'm going to uh reseat this so first things first i'm going to go over to the back here and i'm going to make sure the computer is completely powered off from the wall um, that way you don't risk static shock i've already removed this is the usb header that's used to light the light the heat sink up this is the corsair h100i um, these guys are fan controllers that i pulled out as well and you'll see this sticking out as well that's part of uh i think that was part of the usb header that it uses to uh interface with the computer um i don't remember for sure what it, it might have been the power though actually i think it was the power yeah, yeah, it's got to be the power. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the heat sink. I'm going to show you what's underneath. I'm going to turn it on its side so I can apply this thermal paste. And then I'm going to uh, reattach the heat sink once that's all good. And we'll see uh, if we're okay there. So let's go ahead and remove the heat sink. So what I'm doing is I'm taking out the screws here. I'm um, doing them in an alternating pattern, which is what usually you should do, especially on things like this where it should be under high tension. So I'm removing these uh, screws just to get them to the point where I can remove them with my fingers. And I'm doing them in a cross pattern so there's no tension. So now that there's no tension, I'm going to take these off bit by bit really carefully. Now, fortunately, the H100i came with really good screws. They're really huge screws. They're really easy to put on and tighten and all that stuff. So I don't have to worry too much about potentially losing the screw. But you do have to be careful with a lot of these setups. Um, some of them, so the way that this screw is set up, right, it goes on top of a little mount right here that is actually screwed to the back plate on the back of the motherboard. But there are a lot of heat sinks out there like this that if you're not careful... When you remove these screws, the back plate has nothing to support um, to support it anymore. And then you might run into the back plate falling off in the back. And then you would need to reapply that manually by taking the motherboard out. And it's a, it's a huge mess. So you got to be really careful um, when doing that. Just make sure you're good to go. So let's see. Remove all four screws. Let's see if we can actually get this heat sink out without tugging too much on the power cord and see what we got on the bottom. 
Oh, yeah, that dried out like a motherfucker. Yep, I can see exactly where it did, too. Okay. So, good thing we're doing this. So, if you see... I don't know how well the camera can, can display this for you. Hold on. So, if you see on... Hold on. Come on. The tubing is being a little tough. So, if you see on the bottom here, this... This little part right here, move my finger so it doesn't go to the way. You see the little bottom part where it's blank? And you can see it's also blank on the CPU. So what that tells me is that the thermal paste migrated or dried out or evaporated or some shit. And on the CPU itself, on the CPU itself, which is now being blocked by the, the uh, heat sink, but on the CPU itself, um, an important part of that thermal paste went up and missing. So that's not good. That would be that would really explain a lot. I think reapplying this is going to fix the problem. So I'm looking forward to that. Also, something to note too is when you open these, be very careful. I just opened this and then this stuff came out. You don't want to touch that uh, the gray stuff there. You don't if, it, if the camera wants to fucking focus. Focus. Okay, it's not going to focus. Um, you don't want to touch the gray stuff out there. That stuff will stick to your fingers like crazy. Uh, it is a real pain in the ass to wash off, so I wouldn't I wouldn't do that. Okay, so the next step is going to be cleaning off the uh, the CPU block here. Um, here is the power. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually pull this out. There we go. So now I get a little slack. And I can easily put that back later. That's not that's not a real big issue. Um, but what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be cleaning off the bottom of this CPU block here. I'm going to clean off the bottom of this CPU block. Um, and what I'm going to use to do that is I'm going to use alcohol, rubbing alcohol. Um, and the way I'm going to apply it is I'm going to use standard toilet paper. So uh, typically what I recommend, you can also use a paper towel. Um, they're fine, but paper towels... You do have to be careful. You don't want like little flakes because those little flakes that come off of paper is going to get all over the heat sink. It's going to ruin the thermal conductivity. It's going to make it very difficult um, for your computer to be efficient. So I'm going to go ahead and grab that real quick and I'll be right back. Okay, so what I did was I grabbed like four squares of toilet paper. I folded it up into this little, little ball right here. And then I have my 91% isopropyl alcohol. You can use 75%, whatever. It's it doesn't really matter that much. Um, I I mean, obviously the the higher percentage alcohol content you can get, uh, the more effective it will be at cleaning everything off, right? But you don't need 91%. It's not like if you put 75% on on this thing, it's gonna laugh at you and tell you to go fuck yourself. So what I did was I just uh, get a little bit on that on the toilet paper. We're going to try it on the CPU itself first. So I'm really just going over CPU really quick, really, really lightly, just trying to really get the alcohol in. You don't want to rub the CPU, uh, rub the, um, the uh, thermal paste, the previous thermal paste all over um, the inside of your motherboard and, and all that shit. So take your time. Make sure you're, you're getting it off well. You want to clean the fuck out of this thing. That's really the important part is you really want to clean... The shit out of this thing so take your time make sure you get it off good make sure you're getting everything off as much as possible anything left can cause thermal conductivity issues down the road and you'll be back doing this again before you know it and the good news is I mean when you whenever you buy thermal paste I mean you're paying what uh, eight maybe ten bucks for a, a gigantic fucking syringe of this thing. I mean, you don't need the entire syringe. In fact, if you do, you're probably going to really cause some issues. You don't want goop leaking everywhere inside of your case and and all that stuff. You just need a little dab. I'm going to actually try using the applicator and see if I can do it while it's uh, vertical like this so I don't need to go in and remove everything. But you can see the CPU looks a lot cleaner now. You can actually read uh, what it says on there. It's the i5-4690K. But here, I'll even get a little bit of a close-up here. 
Um, if it wants to focus, is it going to focus? Kind of, maybe. Let me block it out a little bit. Yeah, you see it's nice and clean. That's the lighting is, I'm using a, a light over here. If you, if you probably could guess that. But um, nice and clean, nice and shiny. That's what you want. You want to make sure everything is off of the CPU itself. And then we're going to do something similar. And by something similar, I mean the exact same thing to the bottom of the water block here. Um, and like I said, this is the Corsair H100i. That's just what I picked. Um, side note, was not really worth the $100 investment. Not because it's bad. Not a bad product. It's just, I, I haven't really... I don't know. I mean, I feel like I could have just gone with a Hyper 212 Evo for $25 and gotten a similar performance out of it. But, you know, sometimes you just want to spend a little more money and get a nicer looking product and all that stuff. I mean, I do, I overclock pretty hard on this CPU, I would say. Um, not something that's going to ruin it long term, right? Like, I'm not looking for the highest clock speed I can get. Uh, mine is at about 4.5 gigahertz. Usually it's around 4.5, and I got that at about 1.26 volts, which is not very hot. Like I said, the thing runs at like 60 degrees Celsius uh, when I'm running it at... I would I will call it max load. I'll call it max load. It's not actually max load. Um, when I was initially testing this computer when I first bought it, and I was trying to make sure it was overclock stable. Um, I think, what did, what did I get? Uh, I got like 80 degrees Celsius when I was running like Prime 95 and, and all that other stuff, right? Which, I mean, Prime is supposed to, to run it as hot as fucking possible, right? But still, I, I didn't want it to be like 80 degrees. But it works out that when I'm doing standard computing load type things where, where I'm doing things like OBS and playing game at the same time. Um, it's only getting to about 60 degrees Celsius at maximum load. So it's great for the longevity of it. Haven't had to really turn up the, uh, the voltage too high either, which is really good. But you can see here the, the thermal paste is being kind of a, a pain in the butt to get off. So I'm just really trying to scrub it off as good as I can. And, and you got to take your time with it, right? So like there's still all this gray goop it's going to be on there for a little bit but it's coming off you can you can see how much it's it's getting on the uh on the toilet paper square but yeah you just take your time with it make sure it's all coming off and some of this may have just been staining some of this may have just been staining on the copper block right so i'm not too worried about it it seems good i know i just ran my finger on it and somebody's gonna freak the fuck out and say well you put oils on it I'll wash it off, don't worry. I'm just checking how smooth it is to my finger. Making sure there isn't a lot of bumps and stuff. I think that's about as good as we're gonna as we're gonna get this. So that's probably where I'm gonna stop scrubbing this thing like crazy. Yeah. That seems about as, as good as we're gonna get it. So I'm gonna do one last pass here. And try to get off any last little bits. And that's going to do it. Alright, so now we're going to try... Oh, I, never mind, I can see little bits of uh, little bits of TP stuck there on the thing when I'm looking at it. You can probably see it right here on the camera, like right here in the middle. So we're going to... Oopsies. Bonked in the light. Bonked that light. We're going to just one time over, whoop, like that. And now... There's like maybe one or two specks of dust that I see on there, and that's okay. So we're going to go ahead and seal up the rubbing alcohol. I think it's served its purpose. And then we're going to try and see if we can do this vertically. If it doesn't work, we can always just go ahead and do it horizontally where I'll flip the computer onto its side. So what I'm doing is I'm going to... Very carefully, what I'm, what I'm going to try doing here is I'm going to very carefully put just a little bit of thermal paste on here. I'm very gently pushing down on the plunger 
Try to get this thing started. It doesn't seem to be doing that, so I'm going to try to put my thumb up here and get a little more force. And hopefully this thing doesn't blow up. There we go. I say, hopefully this thing doesn't blow up my finger. All right. That's almost as much thermal paste as you would be using on an entire CPU. So I'm going to put a little bit more on there because some of it's obviously going to stick to the applicator. Like that. And I'm going to try very quickly just rubbing this on here. Very quickly, very smoothly, um, and you don't need this to be even. You don't need this to be super even. Um, the big concern is making sure that there is enough, but not too much. You don't want it leaking over the sides, but you want to make sure it covers the entire surface area of the CPU. And it's fine if it's not super even. Right, it's fine if it's not super even, uh, because when you apply the water block, that pressure is going to even things out for you. And in fact, it's better if you have a little bit of height to to the uh, to the thermal paste. It's it's better if you actually have it stick up a little bit, because then it's going to fill in the little uh, gaps and scratches and and marks that are on the bottom of the. The heat sink, if you look on the bottom of it, you can see, you can visually see the different little scratches and all that stuff like that. And all that is um, minuscule, <clears throat> tiny imperfections in the top of the water block. And, uh, or on the, on the bottom of the water block, the face of the water block. And those tiny imperfections are what ruin your thermal conductivity and is the reason why you have this thermal paste. Thermal paste is just an easy way to transmit heat from point A to B by filling in those little gaps and making sure as much surface area as possible is in contact with the, uh, the water block. So like I said, I'm not trying to thin out the layer here. I'm just trying to make sure that it is all over the CPU. I'm going to get a little more on the sides here. And I'm being liberal with my application here of the uh, thermal paste because chances are I'm not going to use this thermal paste again. Like I said, it came down to, you know, drastic, drastic times call for drastic measures. I want to get this up and running ASAP. So I'm quickly, quickly applying, I mean... I don't know that I would go out of my way for thermal take, uh, you know, cooling products. They, they work. Thermal take's a decent company. I would rather use Arctic Silver, like I said, um, but that's just me. Okay, so now that I have a good amount of thermal paste all over that CPU, I'm going to go ahead and try reapplying the water block see that we can get it on there and the key here is making sure it's lined up first and foremost so I'm making sure this thing lines up correctly the first time and then that way it's on you don't want to move this thing around too much once it's on you don't want to take it back off because that's when you start pulling things out and ruining the whole thing right so what I'm doing now is it's it's squarely over the CPU, I can feel it sticking in place, which is good. I'm going to hold it in place here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go uh, around. We're going to go around uh, alternating sides. I'm going to go until this is finger tight. Like that. Just because it's easier, I'm going to quickly go ahead and do this one on the top left as well. But I'm going to be very careful and I'm going to not tighten this one too much. I want to put the bottom left one on tighter first because I want it to be diagonally secure first and foremost. So we're going to go down to the bottom um, and do that. And I got to say, this is the first time I've ever actually uh, applied a water block while the computer was still standing up. 
usually you put it on its side, right? But that's mainly because I typically did the rice grain method, where you put a grain of rice size of thermal paste on top of the CPU, and then from there, um, you just let it spread itself out. Never used an applicator before. First time for everything, right? It seems like it did okay. I will say one thing that kind of bothers me is when they call it thermal grease, right? They call it thermal grease, which doesn't make a lot of sense to me because it's not grease. Grease is like, uh, it's like an oil, kind of goops everywhere, drips everywhere, right? Paste to me is, is more an accurate term, but hey, tomato, tomato, right? Not a big, not a big deal. Just a personal observation. So yeah, like I said, I'm uh, tightening these diagonally. That one is finger tight. And then this one is now finger tight as well. So now that that's done, I'm going to go around diagonally. We're going to tighten this one. If it wants to tighten, maybe it doesn't. Okay, cool. I don't understand, but whatever. It should, it should tighten a little bit better than that. Might just be this thing being lazy or whatever. I'm going to push in really good. Oopsies. Pushed it a little too much. Get that thing nice and tight. Get it nice and tight. And you might need to do this every once in a while. Uh, this is the first time, I think, ever that I've had to reapply uh, thermal paste because it wasn't secure or, or it burned out or whatever. I don't know what happened, but... I'll tell you right now, if your CPU temperature starts to skyrocket, this is a very cheap potential solution. So yeah, I would, I would definitely look into this first. So with that done, um, I'm going to go ahead and pause the video here. I'm going to go probably find another screwdriver, get this super tight, because you know what? Like, you, you already know what to do here, right? You're just tightening the thing. I'm going to come back uh, when I turn the thing on and make sure this is working. Okay, so I actually had to get a drill. Yes, I do is a drill to make sure that everything was nice and secure. Um, I almost threaded that screw, that wouldn't have been fun. So I had to go ahead and stop. Um, that one's probably not as tight as I would like it, but the other three being as tight as possible is a good indication that I think will be okay. So I'm not too worried about it. I may also just try uh, swapping two screws, right, where that one's a lot easier to do, and then I can put the other one in there and I'll be good to go. But here is the moment of truth, I did Put the power back on for the PC. Let's go ahead and see if everything turns on just fine. Okay, we're starting up. Everything seems to be okay. And that number right there is an indicator of what the temperature is. So we're gonna go ahead and turn off my little extra light here so I can see what the temperature is. Okay. Now it should hopefully hit about 30 degrees at rest, which is good. You may have heard the Windows startup sound. That seems really good if it stays there. If it stays, if it's staying below 30, that's really good for me. So I'm gonna quickly log into the computer, let it run through some initial startup type stuff and see how the number compares. Normally it does go a little bit hotter, right? Well, it's starting up some processes, processes. Hopefully we're hopefully we're okay here. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get all of that and stuff. Wow! So that's actually a pretty good. That's a pretty sizable increase at this point on my computer. I was typically sitting at around maybe 30, 35, 36 degrees. Um, I could see it going up. At, you can see it go up going up right now, right? You can, if you're looking at this number, you can see it. Going back up a little bit here and there, but I'm watching the uh, CPU monitor, and you can see that's an idle 27 degrees Celsius uh, just by reapplying some thermal paste. So now the idle has gone down by 10 degrees Celsius. So that's a vast improvement. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try starting something up here. Let's try. Um, typically, I have three things running at once when I when I stream. I'll typically have Adobe Audition, which I'm pulling that up right now. Um, Audition does take up a bit of CPU. 
So we're gonna pull that up and let that run in the background. So we're still looking at about 30 degrees. That's really good. I'm gonna start up, let's start up some Rainbow Six. Um, now when I was sitting in the menu on Rainbow Six with Audition running in the background, um, I was looking at something, something like uh, 53, 54 degrees Celsius. So we're gonna go ahead and quickly check what that temperature is like while it's uh, loading up Rainbow Six Siege over here. All right. So let's see. Yeah, we're looking at about 40 degrees. I would say that's a vast improvement um, just by reapplying some thermal paste. So yeah, that might be uh, what your problem is. I know this has been a kind of a long video, right? Um, but I guess the goal I was trying to get out of this was I was trying to teach people who have never done an application of thermal paste and they suddenly see their, their temperatures start rising. Hopefully uh, help you through that. Super long video, I know. Maybe I'll edit this and stuff. But um, anyway, guys, thank you for watching. Hope this has been informative for you. Hope you've learned something. Hope this helps you out. Hope you have a good day. And I will see you later. Yeah, 40 degrees in the menu. We are good to go. But I will see you guys later.